Brashear Christie were defending truth and Christianity at the university through on-campus apologetics club. We are 501c3. It was actually formed um, as a little club at a university in, Apple, uh, in Boone, North Carolina called Appalachian State University. It uh, was uh, then called the Reasonable Faith Club. One of the students graduating that year was moving to Charlotte to go to school at Southern Evangelical Seminary and said to his goomba at Appalachian State, hey, why don't we start one at the University of North Carolina at Charlotte? And since we're just students, why don't we get the uh, Southern Evangelical Seminary to kind of take this thing and administer it? Because it's kind of a good idea to form apologetics clubs on campuses. And so Southern Evangelical Seminary, uh, Blake was there at that time, with the help of Blake, uh, decided to, uh, you know, uh, this is a good idea. This will give our students something to do. And uh, so they took it on. They formed a website. In the first year, uh, they were doing pretty well. Uh, so uh, uh, Ratio Christi uh, has formed from those beginnings to where it is now. Now I want to tell you a little bit about us. We, uh, you can see by this, uh, we have a couple of different slogans, defending truth and Christianity at the university taking back the mind of the University for Christ. We have a couple other approved slogans. The name is being trademarked. But we are not out to build another organization. We're out to build a movement that will change a culture at the university, at the local churches, and maybe throughout society. We're focused on being a catalyst for the apologetics community. We're not a resource provider. We don't have speakers. We don't have tapes. We don't have books. We don't have DVDs. We are an outlet for everybody else's resources. We're not speakers. We bring in speakers. We're a conduit for the apologists with resources to come into campuses and into communities. We are a grassroots campaign for the apologetics movement. Remember I told you I was a grassroots political organizer? Now. I'm an apologetics grassroots organizer. I am on a mission from God to form the largest grassroots campaign in the country. Russia Christie is not aerial bombing. Speak, leave. We love that Ravi Zacharias, Stuart McAllister, William Lane Craig, uh, Gary Habermas, all these great speakers go into the universities, uh, but that's not what we do. We we do something a little different. We're the boots on the ground. We're the Marines. After they come in and bomb, we go in and take the island. We want a trained apologist on every campus and in every community in America, but not just in America, all across the world. But like I said, we're essentially building a grassroots campaign. But in this campaign, everybody wins. There's no losers. We also believe in the theory of no competition. Has Christ been divided into factions? Uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 1.13. Uh, we believe in complete collaboration with every other ministry that we work with. We consider them, if you will, wholesalers, and we are opening up lots of retail outlets for them. We facilitate the success and open up more opportunities for these existing ministries. We create opportunities for new ministries. Some of you met Mary Jo White. There's others like Mary Jo that have these smaller ministries than some guy named Craig. What's his name? Bill, uh, some, you know, the Ravi Zacharias. Well, there's, the, uh, there's a number of Mary Jo Whites out there, and we are here to help facilitate uh, bringing them onto campuses, at least regionally at first, and then opening up more opportunities for them. We promote apologetics education. We are in partnership with every major seminary, uh, whether it be Biola, Southern Evangelical Seminary, Liberty University, Luther Rice Seminary, New Orleans Baptist is something that we just started working on. We're uh, working on something with Trinity International that has a very small apologetics program uh, with uh, uh, Robbie Zacharias's help. Uh, one more. Uh, I don't know. I think I may have cut. Well, it's in the list. And in addition to, uh, to working with them, we promote more people 
getting into apologetics training, especially at the master's degree level. And the reason we do is because we need more apologists to open up chapters in every campus in the country. Besides doing that, we build tools for the success of the entire apologetics movement. You come here next year and see some of the tools that we have built. They are going to be phenomenal. You're going to say this is the best thing that ever happened to the apologetics movement because it will actually help the whole movement be coordinated and become a movement. Our current partnerships, uh, and this uh, list may not be complete because we keep adding them, uh, Reasons to Believe, Hugh Ross and his group, Summit Ministries, uh, Frank Turk at crossexamine.org, Faculty Commons is so excited about working with us. Uh, in fact, don't tell the Campus Crusade for Christ guys, I guess I just did, that they're almost more excited about working with us than the Campus Crusade for Christ guys because they got this uh, drive to uh, you know, be involved in apologetics. Uh, it's very cool. They're, they're actually helping us find campus advisors. So if we got a, a chapter director, a future chapter director trying to get something going on a campus, uh, we can call up one of the leaders of this organization and say, who do you know at UC Berkeley or who do you know at uh, uh, UC Irvine, et cetera. Uh, we work with uh, Breakpoint, which is Colson Ministries, uh, also known as the Colson Center for uh, Christian Worldview, the Apologetics Resource Center. We have de par uh, uh, de partnerships developing with uh, Reasonable Faith. We met with uh, Bill Craig's chairman of his board. Uh, and then I met with his wife, which I think got me a lot farther than the other guy. Uh, we uh, just met with Ravi Zacharias Ministries. They're very excited about the partnership. And then all those universities that I told you about uh, uh, just a few seconds ago. Now, what has happened this year since February 2nd, 2011? Remember that, Groundhog's Day. Since that day to today, no man could have done what has happened to this. This has been a so sovereign move of God. Remember I told you we started at Appalachian State, moved to Southern Evangelical Seminary. Within the first year, they had five chapters. Pretty good chapters too. They got Texas A&M, they got Ohio State, they got NC State, they had Appalachian State, and they had University of North Carolina at Charlotte. By the next year or so, year and a half, they moved to 12 chapters. And since February of 2011, we've moved to 58 full chapters. We're really at 60. Blake's just got to get some of this stuff updated. Now, a lot of these are in early stages. Uh, for instance, we have Jane here uh, starting a chapter at UC Irvine. Uh, these uh, chapters are early, a lot of them are early phase. They take a lot of work uh, uh, to help Jane get to that point where she becomes a full chapter uh, with the Constitution, approved by the university, with access to university funding to bring in speakers, weekly meetings with students, student leaders, you know, president of the club, vice president, etc. It takes some time to get there. So a lot of these chapters are early phases of development, but 12 to 60 in nine months, this had to be a move of God. We also have a global vision. We are currently in South Africa, Brazil, India. Uh, we uh, opened up a chapter in Haiti. where We've got in, lots of interest from Canada uh, that has been coming over and over again. I just had something uh, happen where somebody from Nepal wants to do something. We got some interest in Australia and New Zealand. And I've been resisting it because forming an international ministry is a huge headache. And I quit resisting about two or three weeks ago, and we talked to a guy who I think has already said yes, he's coming on board to form Rosho Christi International. We're gonna actually form an international division. And we've been in business nine months, can you imagine? We have developed a very robust website. Thinking ahead, okay, if I had 500 chapters for Rosho Christi, how would this website need to function? Oh it's not gonna be a little $2,500 website. This thing has to have 50 chapter pages, 50 chapter calendars, 50 chapter blogs, and all kinds of other features for it. It's gonna to have to have resources pages so we can uh, develop a speakers bureau so that uh, uh, we can get uh, people to work together and then we've gotta figure out how to do all this calendar system that works together on it. But God gave us the ability to do it and now we have 
uh, a website up that can handle thousands, thousands of chapters. And again, this has all happened in nine months. God's provided the resources necessary, including the personnel. Uh, Blake came on board, be, you know, I, I knew him because I, when I first called about Ratio Christi, uh, you know, he's the first person I talked to, but he wasn't working uh, for Rasha Christie, and then he wasn't working for the seminary. I ran into him uh, doing some work on Twitter, and I said, how the heck does Twitter work? I don't even understand this thing. And he, he started to show me, and then, uh, you know, I, we talked over lunch. I went down to Charlotte. We talked over lunch, and I felt like God had led me to Blake, and I said, come on board. He has taken uh, all of the IT work, all the chapter growth, and the uh, support work for chapters, and he's handling that while I handle um, trying to raise money, which God has just poured money into us. I haven't hardly asked for any. It just keeps coming in. Now, that, that's a good, I like to ask for money. <laughs> it's a genetic deficiency, my wife says, but I do, but I don't have to. This money just keeps pouring into this thing. So God's provided the resources necessary. We are changing the game on campus. We won't back down. We're not gonna let some professor just say, listen, the argument's been settled, science disproved. We do not back down. We have the truth. We know we have the truth. We know their arguments do not stand up to the intellectual scrutiny that they impose on us. So when we impose it on them, what do they do? Little bit of ad hominem. Oh, you stupid Christians, you know? Well, why? Because you, you don't have an answer, pal? I gotta tell you, thank God for well-trained apologists because they taught them in that second part of 1 Peter 3, 15 and 16, which says, and do this with gentleness and respect. I'm a politician, I would have taken them apart. <laughs> so thank God that we have people that do that. Uh, we started this thing out entirely thinking it was gonna be a tent maker ministry. Find apologists that wanna do this as a sideline and uh, just do that. We, um, uh, we were extremely successful with that. We got a ton of people that said, I'm looking for a way to use all my training, uh, but, but I have never found anything. I mean, I've been waiting for the church to ask me to do a Sunday school class. Well, now we're giving them an opportunity and a structure and a name and a brand and you know the legal authority and all kinds of stuff. And so they've started doing it as tent makers, but then we found out people that got a degree in apologetics wanted to be in full-time ministry. So we created an opportunity for people to go into full-time ministry uh, and uh, we just started that. Uh, we got approved by our board in August. I think we hired our first person in September, and um, I think we're up to three to five or six uh, full-time apologists. We want, uh, we want to get a team of apologists working on every campus, but we'd like to at least one of them on every campus to be full-time. Uh, Rashio, I just said all this, we're the first uh, organization in the country to start hiring full, uh, full-time apologist missionaries to open campus ministries and work with local churches. And by the way, that's the other thing we want our apologists to do, is not just work at the university, but go and serve the local church. Be a servant to the pastor and say, let me help your people understand how to give an answer when Uncle Bill comes over and says, all religions lead to God. And they don't have to sit there and say, geez, I don't know how to answer. Uh, you know, we want our people to go into those churches and help people to know how to do it. We, uh, how do we address the needs? We establish uh, campus uh, student clubs that are committed to apologetics, uh, seeking the reasons for the truth of Christianity, examining the scientific, philosophical, and historical evidence, using very important critical thinking skills. We use this a lot when we're talking about going to universities because we want to work with other campus ministries and you know we talk about you know the need for apologetics. We want to serve them and we want to help their students also develop critical thinking skills. Um, understanding, engaging the idea of the day. You know, apologet apologetics tra changes all the time. Uh, especially, I mean, the other side is always changing the rules, right? If, uh, if you've killed, uh, uh, what is that, uh, directed panspermia or something? If you killed that idea, then they're multiversing something. So, uh, you know, you've got to be, it's got to stay on your toes with this crowd. And, uh, and of course, we bring uh, the same resources to the local church. Uh, think about this. If we get an apologist at uh, UC Berkeley 
and uh, we have a speaker coming in for them, and they're working with the local church. Uh, you know, the, the, the local church also then has access to the same um, speakers bureau that the apologist has access to. If the speaker's in town, the speaker, you know, might uh, be able to do something at the church uh, at, at a cost that the church can afford. So what's the goal? Uh, initiate a global grassroots movement. In fact, that's our mission statement. Uh, it says that we are a global, a global movement uh, to equip uh, faculty and students uh, with um, the scientific, historical, and philosophical reasons for trusting in Jesus Christ. Uh, we're there to create a renaissance of Christian thinking at the university, share the gospel with Christians and non-Christians alike. Very important that we share the gospel with Christians because at the university, many of them are falling away from their faith. Uh, provide an open forum for non-believers and, uh, you know, to ask questions and seek answers without feeling awkward or like they're the odd man out. Um, we, uh, we engage the skeptics, the atheists, the agnostics, the pagans, and even the spaghetti monster people, uh, you know, from time to time and, and try, uh, try and get them to come to our chapter meetings and discuss things. Uh, our girl who, uh, Biola grad, who just started a chapter at Rutgers, uh, is um, uh, been asked by the Muslim groups to, you know, work with uh, them and present each other's ideas to each other. What a great opportunity. Um, we're there to reverse the trends of deconversion that, uh, uh, you know, we hear so much uh, statistical information on. Uh, this is big, de uh, demolish the false dichotomy between faith and reason. Uh, see Christians worship God with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength. Uh, help students, like I said, develop crit critical thinking skills. Serve other campus ministries this is very important. We're not there to take over. We're not there to become the place people go to worship, the place people go for devotional Bible studies, the place they go to have pizza. Well, actually, we do have pizza. You gotta have pizza at college campuses. And we're not the place to go for bowling. Of course, bowling on the California, it's like, what's bowling? I've never heard of that. Um, but if you go to Chicago, you say bowling, everybody, oh yeah, bowling. Um, but um, <laughs> Uh, but we're not a, we're, we, we really focus on folks developing their mind and developing uh, the skills to win their friends, family, relatives, neighbors, co-workers for Christ. The goal uh, is also, you know, like I said, to work with local churches, not to strain their budgets, bring uh, resources to their youth uh, groups, their cell groups, train parents. This is a big thing that we are after, our apologists going into churches and offering to train parents so that when their second grader or their college students come home with, you know, ideas that uh, they've never heard, that they know how to give an answer to them. And um, so how are we doing this? Uh, at the university, weekly meetings uh, on campus. Uh, we serve other ministries. Uh, our uh, groups, our, our apologists uh, work one-on-one -on -one with students many times, mentoring them or a small group of them. Uh, we uh, train people to become incredibly confident witnesses. Okay, so we've learned all this stuff. Let's go out on campus and talk to some folks. You will be amazed at what happens to somebody who has sat through some really good apologetics training and then learned to go out and get in conversations. We had one guy, Brian, from Ohio State. He's graduated now. He said, man, before Ratio Christie, it was... It was hard to witness. I, I didn't know how to witness. I was, it was getting taken apart. He goes, after Ratio Christie was there for a little bit, every day was a day of new conversations and conversions, sometimes right on the spot. Now that's, that's what's exciting about this. Uh, and uh, you know, we want to see more of those type of opportunities. Uh, of course, we do special events, bring in speakers, and we do the follow-up. You know, instead of a speaker coming in, and people hearing it, and then he leaves, and there's nothing there. Ratio Christie's there to follow up, especially with those who went, the skeptics, the atheists, the agnostics, the free thinkers that went to those things and say, I have more questions. They go to the other campus ministries, and the other campus ministries are like, well, you know, I, I can probably tell you somebody to go to, but, uh, you know, I don't know if I have those answers. We ha send them to us. We, we want to do that. Um, and like I said, we serve local churches. 
uh, events. Uh, we do all kinds of events. Uh, we have uh, debates, we have lectures, we have discussions. Uh, we have uh, William Lane Craig, uh, we have Hugh Ross, we have Gary Habermas, Mike Laconia. All these guys have already uh, said to us, we love what you're doing, count us in. Uh, and uh, you know, so our Ratio Christi chapter directors have access to all these speakers and uh, we expect to start being some one of the organizations that become major bookings to get these people uh, booked at various locations around the country. Um, how does the Ratio Christi chapter form? I think we have a few students here. You guys from UC Berkeley? Yeah, great. Uh, is David Fields here? Okay. Uh, it, David Fields is the chapter director starting the chapter at UC Berkeley. See Blake Anderson, he'll connect you with David Fields, okay? Um, uh, sometimes starting a chapter happens instantaneous. I mean, uh, uh, Rutgers went up just like that. Uh, they formed a club, they got approved by the university, they got their academic advisor, and they got their constitution signed, and they're meeting, and they're already uh, preparing to meet with the Muslims Club, you know, to to see whose ideas are better ideas. Sometimes it takes a little while. There's um, a few different uh, uh, models to help people develop. Uh, if uh, if students get a hold of us and say, "Hey, we want a chapter at our school," we say, "Great, start finding out where there's interest. Let us find an apologist. We'll get an apologist to come work with you because." We will not let a chapter start without an apologist and students. Of course, it can't start without students because you can't have a student club without students, right? So, uh, but we need an apologist in there because if we let just the students do it, you're gonna get busy. You're gonna get midterms, you're gonna get finals, you're gonna get papers. You probably don't have to write many papers, right? <laughs> the eyes, uh, where are they? yeah. The, uh, uh, if we let students do it, the club flounders. If we have a full-time apologist or even a part-time apologist on campus to help you, uh, it's gonna work. Uh, we have um, uh, lay people, uh, you know, uh, pastors uh, have approached us saying, hey, I wanna start a chapter. Good, go to our website, uh, go on to Adopt a College. By the way, we have lots of cards here. Adopt a College, we have uh, Blind Faith is Lame. This is one's for students. If you're an apologist and you're looking for work, we got one about hiring an apologist. Please pick some of these up. Please take some with you, give them to some other people. Uh, but anybody can help us start a chapter. An apologist can tell us, I wanna work at UC Irvine. I wanna work at uh, uh, University of uh, San Francisco. Uh, and uh, we'll say, professors can help us get something started. A small group in a church can help us get a chapter started. Uh, and existing standalone campus apologetics ministry. We've had that happen. Somebody's doing a little apologetics club on their campus and they say, hey, if we connect with you, what kind of benefits do we get? And we're like, wow, you get everything. I mean, we get access to our website, your own page, your blog, you get all these Facebook things. You, you, I mean, we're getting so many hits on our website. You get access to all these speakers and you know, so we, we get folks to join us that way. Uh, birthing stages, I'm not gonna go through a lot of these, but we call them phase one, two, three, four, five. If somebody's prospecting, they're not phase one, two, three, four, five, but you know, all this means is if somebody says, like uh, Jane said, hey, I wanna help start a chapter at UC Irvine. Phase one, she's out talking to students that are starting to meet phase one, phase two, they're actually talking to the university, getting the information, our constitution in front of them, want to be official club, phase three, they've signed the constitution with us, approved by the university, access to student government funding, et cetera. Phase four is uh, when they've done their first event. They brought in Mike Laconia, William Lane Craig, uh, Craig Hayes and somebody, et cetera. How's the chapter work? Um, students from the chapter, Constitution governs the operation of the chapter. Ratio Christi chapter uh, director is the apologist who's knowledgeable in apologetics. Uh, if uh, we can get a local church to tie in to you guys and support uh, the group, we want them to do that. And of course, uh, we have faculty advisors at some universities, those are optional, but it's great to have them uh, anyway. So. Um, uh, Here's uh, what I want you to know about where we're heading. 
uh, Rasher Christie plants to hire as many apologists as possible. We will have a minimum of 200 chapters by the end of 2013. I want more than that, but that's our targeted goal that my board will be comfortable with. Uh, we will uh, help every chapter to develop some fundraising pages so they can raise money to bring speakers to campus. Uh, we are developing recorded training for our apologists. Uh, we um, uh, have a major donor program to help cover the national budget. Uh, and, and there's so much more. We'll have that Speakers Bureau, the RC International Division. There's a very big, exciting tool coming online in uh, 2012 uh, that uh, I'm not going to tell you what it is. I want you to keep going back to my website because when this comes online, you'll say that's what's been needed in this whole thing for a long, long time. So how do we do all this? Our job's really simple. We just follow Jesus. I, honestly, Blake and I have just been holding on for our life as all these things open up before us. We just every day follow him and all this stuff has been happening. Our formula is P equal PT, means providence equal perfect timing. Everything has fall, fallen together because of God's providence. And it's a very exciting movement on, of God. Get on board. Uh, he'll show us every step of the way at your university, at the national level, at the international level. Um, you can get involved as an apologist, become a full-time, part-time, full-time chapter director, or be a tent maker. The guy at UC Berkeley is an architect. He doesn't want to give up his day job to be the apologist on campus, so you know he's going to uh, uh, continue to do his job, but he wants to work with uh, students on campus, bring in some good apologetics training, help you guys uh, become leaders in apologetics yourself. Professors. Alumni Christian leaders can adopt a college or support a chapter that exists. Students, give us a call. Tell us we want a chapter on our campus and get one started. You can all help us. You can join us. You can pray with us. You can help us. You can give to us. Remember I said I'd like to ask for money? Okay. Can I have some money? <laughs> that's, a, that's what I wanted to tell you about. It. I think it's honestly, this is, this is why this thing has become a phenomenal movement. The fastest growing apologetics campus ministry in the country is because God's behind it. He's just making it all happen. And, and I, I want to see you plug into it and get on board with it. Questions, comments, throw paper, tomatoes. Yes, sir. When I was in college, I was a campus crusade. Mm -hmm. And I've also uh, had contact in the varsity of graduate school to study navigators material and so forth. Why do you think, uh, it seems logical to me that apologetics is some way taking on that function, and even those groups need to be more, more apologetic right. in their approach. Can you tell us a bit about that? The yeah. The environment on campus and so forth. Yeah, it's a, well, you know, the students can tell you. Yeah, it's kind of, nasty on campus sometimes. If you believe in Christ and you say so publicly or if they know so, uh, you can get ridiculed pretty quickly and easily. It's uh, uh, and humiliated by people who um, really, if uh, they were up against one of our apologists, you know, wouldn't be able to get away with what they get away with. Uh, but the other campus ministries, um, first of all, they don't feel like they can do it. We've talked to a lot of them about this. Um, they're somewhat intimidated by it because apologetics takes a lot of study. Uh, in fact, most of these apologists are some of the brightest people I've ever met. They're way brighter than I am. Eh, but, you know, I'm a politician. Most people are, right? <laughs> so, um, so, you know, and the, by the way, the question is, you know, what about the other groups on campus? What we're finding is we get some resistance from other groups on campus many times before we get there. Once we get there, they love us because we, we tell them, listen, we're not here to compete with you. We, we have a no competition zone, and we tell our chapter directors, go meet with them, see what they're doing. Find out what they think competition is. Try to avoid competition and look for ways to serve them and, uh, and offer to do training to their groups. And, uh, and so we get some of that. Now, um, uh, that is working very well once we're on campus, uh, but sometimes they resist us early on. So um, uh, other campuses, again, I'll go back to Rutgers, uh, it was the InterVarsity group 
that heard about us and said, we got to help you get on campus. The guy got it. So, and he helped lead the way to get some of the other campus clubs on. They like it that we do what we do. That way they can do what they do. And what they do is important because if somebody in the, um, a free thinker changes their mind and has a conversion experience, they have to be discipled. Well, apologetics is good discipling, but so is fellowship. And so is devotional Bible study. And so is learning to walk with Christ. And so is going bowling if you're in Chicago, not in the east, west coast, of course, you know. Uh, going to, what do you do, polo matches or something out here? I don't know. Does that answer that pretty well? OK. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Right. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I uh, graduated with a four-year degree in Bible, and I read one apologetics book in one course. And it wasn't even an apologetics course. So it's very typical, and then at the seminary level, it is optional. There are actually a total of six seminaries that have a focus in apologetics out of all the seminaries in the country. It, it kind of lost favor. It used to be a big thing at Wheaton. Wheaton doesn't even have a course in apologetics now. So, um, but look at what God's done. Um, you know, you had those uh, leaders like Norm Geisler and all these people that have developed this intellectual framework over the past 50, 60 years. And then you get to a new level where the Ravi Zacharias and Josh McDowell and others actually started to bring it into popularity. And then at some point, all these crazy students started to go looking for apologetics education and get master's degree, knowing that there was nothing, no jobs. But they couldn't help themselves. They had to go do it. God was calling them to do it. I mean, it's a white elephant in the room uh, at apologetics schools that uh, it's like, what are you going to do with this degree when you're done? Um, FedEx delivery? I don't know. You know? But now, the seminaries are excited about us because uh, they can say to their students, hey, listen, you can go start your own ministry. You can go work with another ministry. But Rosho Christie is always looking for apologists. So I think as time goes on, some of the other seminaries are going to say, hey, we need to start doing this. And, and we're going to start to see a resurgence of apologetics. And I think the church, this is my prophetic statement. Okay, a, po a politician making a prophetic statement, be careful. The church is heading into a new age, the age of the apologist. Out of necessity, the church is under intellectual attack and it needs the apologist. The apologist is the evangelist, the true evangelist. The one, like the pastor and the teacher in Ephesians 4 that says, um, that equips the saints for the work of the ministry. Well, the apologist equips the saints for winning their neighbors, their family, their co-workers to Christ by helping them provide the answer. So I think there's a resurgence going on. I think the apologist is the uh, intellectual gladiator. Yes, that's right. We're going to have to buy some armor and swords and stuff. Any other questions, students? Who? Oh, yeah. Doug. Uh, how, would, how would your organization reach people that wouldn't go to and whatnot uh, go to your meetings? Um, well, uh, at the university, uh, usually our clubs are pretty small. So if we just focused on our club, uh, we wouldn't have much, uh, much to do. Clubs may range from 5 to 25 students on the average. Um, but these people then are really serious about being confident witnesses for Christ. Uh, the second part of that is the outreach of the chapter director and the students to other students, the outreach of the apologist to the other campus ministries. But the biggest way we do this is on campus events, debates, lectures, forum, open to the entire campus. Um, some of the best ones are when we can convince a professor 
to debate somebody that we bring in. And of course, the professor makes it a requirement in his department and the rest of his department makes a requirement that the students that are taking classes in that department that semester show up for these, me these uh, meetings. And so uh, it's kind of a cool thing that you know we end up reaching a lot of people that many times would never have even come, but they're kind of forced to do it, you know. But but we get huge numbers of people just showing up to these things. Sometimes uh, that one down in uh, UT Austin, uh, they were at overflow and they could fit 3,000 people into the auditorium. So it's kind of amazing what happens. Every club, uh, every chapter director is required to do at least one event a year. Most do two. Am I right? We don't want to be all event centered, so we basically say we, we want to have one public event a year, minimum and maximum of two. Um, so it, it depends, and there's a lot of smaller forms and things going on. The other thing I'll say is that um, there's a lot of just personal interaction. Once again, kind of once you've trained people to be competent witnesses, there's a lot of uh, the directors and the and the students just going out onto the campus and talking with students and setting up a table, putting up a provocative question or, or you know, just kind of being there to, to interact with students and doing essentially one-on-one -on -one street evangelism in whatever way they choose to do that. Um, so there's, yeah, there's a lot of interaction and a lot of just, um, mm -hmm. yeah, just right. personal interaction that's coming out of, out, of the, out of the training and out of the kind of the, the discipleship of the Christian mind that's going on. Yeah, and then afterwards, we're starting to get graduates, you know, finally now that we've been uh, doing this for three years, and our graduates are going out and they're reaching into their communities now, bringing apologetics training into their churches, taking it if they go on to grad school. Some of them are even interrupting their careers to go get more apologetics training and then going on with their careers as engineers or teachers or whatever they happen to do. So, very cool thing uh, for folks in Ratio Christi chapters. For instance, uh, students uh, that are in the Ratio Christi chapter, Biola has offered a special, very special, uh, like one third of the cost price to get a certificate in Christian apologetics while you're a student in a Ratio Christi chapter. Um, Ratio Christi chapters can buy resources from the apologetics ministries. Uh, relatively inexpensive, sometimes a third of the price that you see online uh, so that you can use those tools in the, uh, at, at club meetings and as training tools. So lots of, lots of cool opportunities that are starting to develop with all this. Other questions? Comments? Yes, sir. What's the sort of, uh, I looked at your website a little bit, but what's the sort of uh, theological diversity for apologists? Um, across the board, we don't have any Mormons, <laughs> but but we do uh, we do have everything from Presbyterians to I think we have a Lutheran. Um, we we honestly have this it's non, wide. It's non-denominational. We have we have students from many different uh, denominational backgrounds. Uh, our our statement of faith is trying to focus on kind of the historic Christian faith. It, it is evangelical, Protestant, um, but um, a, lo a lot of there's a lot of diversity in the in the directors uh, and in the students that sort of thing. Um, yep. Best thing to do is read our um, belief statement under the About tab on us, and you can see where we stand. But in all honesty, that uh, we, we still have a lot of uh, students uh, or chapter directors that have come on that uh, um, you know are from a diverse background. So, so in, unless you're a Mormon or a Jehovah Witness, we, you know, Unfortunately. yeah. <laughs> and we have we have a lot of uh, skeptic and atheist students coming in as members in the clubs. They can be members. Uh, it, the student officers are, uh, it's reserved for, for Christian believers, uh, but we have a lot of, a lot of uh, atheists interacting, coming, coming to the meetings. Um, that's a really neat interact. We have a lot of interaction with some of the other free thinkers societies on, on campus. Uh, we're a little bit of a different breed of Christian organizations such that they're, 
they're curious about us because we're trying to present ourselves as a, a you know the reason of Christ, and uh, so they. We've had some very good interaction. We'll co-sponsor debates together. We'll have uh, forums and a very respectful dialogue. Some, sometimes with Christian organizations, sometimes with the skeptics right. or atheists. Right. Yep. Um, okay, let me take a poll here. Uh, students, okay, and all UC Berkeley, you're Sachs, okay, you're UC Berkeley? Biola. Oh, you're Biola, okay. Apologist, right? Apolo yeah, okay. Um, that was the next question. Ap apologists are being trained for apologists. Okay. Professors, I don't want to leave anybody out. Uh, uh, wild evangelist. <laughs> I like it. Everybody should have their hand up on that one. Um, listen, students, let us get a club started on your school. Help us to do it. There's one starting in UC Berkeley. Let us connect you. Uh, we got something going, Sachs, uh, he's, he lived in, his brother lives in Sachs, Sacramento. Uh, that's Sachs, Sachs is Sacramento, right? Sachs State. Sacramento State University. Okay, that's the same thing, okay. Sa I didn't know if Sachs, S-A-X, or I don't know. But anyway, um, let us get one started there. Apologist, you're being trained. Uh, Apologia? Uh -huh. Yeah, it's kind of like, uh, like why I was undergraduate of apologetic ministry. Right. So we're all involved in it. We just want to use some good thoughts with the apartments. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We, we'd love to do that. Um, yeah, provide, we can help provide some resources to you guys. But, but then again, we also want you guys then to you know, move on and become apologists and yeah. start working with us. Um, where, where are you at? I'm uh, in Richmond, Virginia. Oh, great. Ooh. Okay, all right. You know, um, Julie Miller at Rutgers uh, is getting three credits for starting the chapter at Rutgers. Yeah, great. So, something to think about. Uh, we have a big need at Virginia Tech if you uh, uh, want to move to Blacksburg. <laughs> we have some specific university of Virginia, but maybe have specific universities, and if someone says, okay, I'm willing to move and go there, we have positions available and basically communities and existing clubs that are looking for a full-time apologist that want to help help them raise funds and help, get, help them get going. That's right. We also have professors that are also chapter directors. Okay? Now, every time we form a chapter with an apologist, we say, don't do it alone. Let us find other apologists in your area. Form some teams. They might be from another school, the SES. They might be from reason to believe, they're a scientific apologist or whatever. We, we start to go out and search and find people to help put on your team. We're, tr we're doing it. In fact, Jane joined a team uh, with uh, another guy at uh, UC Irvine. So, um, you know, the, the thing is, we're here to help you. Don't, don't leave here and not connect with us. Grab some cards, get on our website, send us emails, tell us what you want to do, and let us help you make it happen. Uh, because we really do want to make it happen. Uh, we definitely want to be at uh, San Francisco University. I mean, it, you know, and, and Jane uh, may actually want to move back here to help you do that, so. Um, but uh, that's, any more questions? Uh, if, uh, if I can answer, I know I'm gonna get, I'm getting the, hey, we're getting pretty close, you know, so you can go to the next session. Biola University offers a variety of biblically-centered degree programs, ranging from business to ministry to the arts and sciences. Visit biola.edu to find out how Biola could make a difference in your life.